Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this video we're going to talk about lowering the riding height of a car and does it make sense or does it make sense? It's kind of a common thing to lower your car amongst car enthusiasts and when I talk to those folks um, I ask them why are you lowering your car? And then the answer is typically, well, it looks good and it's much better handling. And then I go like, really? Because that might not always be the case. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So let's start. It is well known that lowering the central point of gravity on a car is improving the stability. And this is just the law of nature. If I take this hammer here, the point of gravity is on the heavy part, right? That's where it is. So if I hold the hammer like this, it's very stable because the point of gravity is low to the ground. If I hold the hammer like this, then the point of gravity is high up and the hammer is pretty much unstable. It's hard to keep. And it's the same thing with a car. So designers are trying to bring the car as low as possible so that it has good stability, but of course they are constrained with many different factors because the car is a full 3D model. It is not just the central point of gravity. So manufacturers typically try to get the central point of gravity on a car as low as possible and right in the middle of the car. Now on the race car this might be easier, but a commercial standard stock car this is a bit more difficult because you got your engine in the back or in the front, you've got a gas tank, you have a battery, you have all kinds of parts that will determine where this central point of gravity is. There is nothing you can do about it. Of course, you as an owner of the car, you could start shifting around some weight in the car, but that would mean modifying the car. So you might want to move the battery to the left or to the right or things like that, but that's a bit complex. So people normally don't do this. A common practice is actually to add weight to the car to compensate for that central point of gravity. But adding weight is taking away performance on the brakes and it's taking performance away on acceleration. So this is something you don't want to do. But anyhow, now we know what the central point of gravity is because it's going to play an important role once we start talking about roll. So the natural reaction would be, yeah, let's lower the car because it's going to be better because then the central point of gravity is really low down to the tarmac, so it's going to improve road handling. Yeah, but there is something else, as I mentioned, and that is what we call a roll. We all know that if you're driving your car fast through a corner, the car is going to lean towards the outside of the corner. And then you take the corner like this. So the car is shifting the weight from the inner wheels to the outer wheels. And as such, the car is going to tilt. And that tilt we call a roll. The problem with roll is that the tires on the outside are now having a fairly big patch onto the tarmac, so they have good grip. The tire is pushed into the tarmac, it's rubbed against it. But the inner wheels, they are almost lifted. The contact patch is minimum. And the result of that is that we have reduced grip. We want to have grip on all four of the wheels, even if we corner. And that is the problem with roll. You're losing grip. And that's why we need to avoid roll. The roll force is determined by the location of the roll center. And the roll center is a fictive point on your front suspension and on your rear suspension. And the car is going to roll around the roll center whenever you corner and this is what we call the roll center point there's one in the front there's one in the back so when engineers design cars they design them for a specific purpose so if you buy any cruiser then that car is engineered so that it provides you a lot of comfort you know when it's going on a straight line you don't feel the bumps it's very smooth you almost like you're driving from within your sofa and engineers have to make a compromise between comfort and road handling. On the other hand, that limousine or that cruiser, when you take a fast corner, this thing is going to lean over, roll over tremendously. It's not really good in road handling. 
And I'm not talking about electronic correction systems and all that now, but just pure basic mechanics. On the other hand, if you buy in a sports car, then that one has a very stiff suspension and you can feel every bump on the road. So your comfort level is fairly low, but it has great road handling. So whenever you corner with that, there will be a minimum roll. Typically, your sports car will be lower to the ground as well because that provides more stability. So everything on a car is a compromise. And the same thing is true for changing your riding height. And now let's see what this is all about. I will use this race car here for the demonstration to show what the effect is between riding height and the roll center and the related roll forces that are developed depending if the roll center is low or high. And I'm using this car just because it's easy to see the suspension. So this car is having what we call wishbones. There is an upper wishbone, there is a lower wishbone, and many cars have that. Road cars may have struts, which is a little bit different, but the theory is the same. And the wishbone is connected on one side with a ball joint to the upper uh, side of the upright, and the other wishbone on the bottom is connected with a ball joint to the lower part of the upright. And on the other side of the wishbone, uh, that is connected to the chassis. And these are very important points. The connection point of the uh, ball joint towards the upright and the connection point of the wishbone towards the chassis because these are critical points where we're going to use to draw some lines. So let's assume that our center point of gravity is here and of course the center point of gravity is not in the front here but it's somewhere in the middle of the cockpit lower to the ground. But if you were to be able to look through all this, let's say that's the reference point. So now we need to figure out where is our roll center. To find the roll center, we're going to draw a line from the top ball joint, where it connects to the wishbone, through the connection point along the wishbone on the chassis, and we let that line continue. And then we're going to do the same. We're going to draw a line from the bottom ball joint along the wishbone through the connection point in the front here and we continue the line. Now those two lines, they will intersect at a certain point. And let's call that our intersection point number one. And we do exactly the same thing on the other side. Right? So we also draw those lines. So now we have lines coming from that way, lines coming from that way. These are in the intersection points. So we have intersection point one here for this wheel. We have intersection point two for that wheel, which is probably around here somewhere. And intersection point one is going to be out there. Now we need to draw a line from the center of the wheel patch to intersection point one. And we do the same thing on the other wheel. From the middle of the wheel, the patch on the ground, we draw a line towards intersection point two. And where those two lines cross, that is what we call our roll center. So now we know where the roll center is, and we also know where the central point of gravity is. And that distance between the two, that is actually your roll force. So the bigger the distance, the bigger the force. The shorter the distance, the lower the force. And you will see that the roll center is actually changing. It's gonna get lower, when you lower the car and it's going to get higher up when you raise the car. So that distance here keeps changing, right? So the lower the car, the bigger the roll force will be because that distance is bigger. Now you can consider this distance between the roll center and the central point of gravity a kind of a handle. If you have a short handle, you can move things around. There's not a lot of force. But if you have a long handle, you can move things around quite a bit. And that is the roll. I can roll a lot with a long handle, and I roll less with a short handle. And this is what it is all about. So lowering the car is increasing the roll force. And I have two examples for you. One with a 40 millimeter riding height, and one with a 60 millimeter riding height. And you'll see the difference. So. Let's look on those pictures that I took and then you'll see what a different hiding right does to your roll center. 
So this is our first case and the riding height is 40 millimeters. And here I positioned the camera correctly. So I have no distortion and angles like you've seen before on the live demonstration where I was trying to draw the lines and the camera was a bit too high up. But you can see here that the height is 40 millimeters. And in fact, that the distance between the roll center and the point of gravity is about 145 uh, millimeters, which is quite a bit. If we were to look now on the same kind of picture, but then with a riding height of 60 millimeters, you will see that that will be difference. And that will be case number two. And in case number two, I changed the riding height from 40 millimeters to 60 millimeters. And immediately I could see that the roll center raised. So the roll center was getting closer to the central point of gravity. And that distance was now 110 millimeters versus 145. In other words, the roll force is now less than it was in the previous case. So raising the car reduces the roll in essence. And here you can see on both pictures where we compare the 60 millimeter riding height with the 40 millimeter riding height. And you can see the difference in the roll force, which is the green line that you see between the roll center and the central gravity point. Now, of course, uh, it is not all like this in the car because it's a three dimensional thing, but it gives you a pretty good impression on the effect of riding height and roll center. So folks, you've seen the effect of lowering your car on the roll. So if you're going to do it, be aware of it and compensate the roll by either having stronger spring rates and a more sturdy sway bar. That will compensate for that extra amount of roll that you have. The other alternative is, of course, that you have an extension part for your wrist bones on your suspension so you can actually have the right angle on the lower wrist bone so you keep raising that roll center even though you lower the car. These kits are available but you gotta buy the right ones. Do not fall into the trap by just releasing that ring, relaxing the spring on your coilover because the car will get lower down but you're gonna have a lot of roll and that spring won't be able to deal with it anymore so it's even worse. So don't do that. Buy the proper kit and in most cases, it's going to be very hard to improve the roll factor on a stock sports car. Those are already tuned very well. Now on the race car, it's a different story on the track. Uh, there you can do all kinds of adjustments because comfort is a non-issue. All what you want to have is good road holding. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.